Okay, here we go. This is what games are going to look like, okay, guys? Epic Games? Fortnite? Ooh. Hi, I'm Chance Ivey, Senior Technical Designer at Epic Games. And I'm Galen Davis, producer and evangelist for Quixel at Epic Games. Evangelist? Last summer, we revealed the it's first look at what's coming in Unreal Engine 5, the next generation we of our real-time technology, like and our demo, and Lumen in the Land of Nanite. Since then, the Engine team has been working hard on preparing the tools and technology for creators around the world to get their hands on so that okay. they can explore the new features and provide us with feedback. Now, just a few months ago, we assembled a small team of developers to see what they could build using these new features. All right, so the now we're going to see The result is it. a new practical sample project called Valley of the Ancient. And today, we're excited to give you the very first hands-on look at some of the new tools and workflows that we used to build it. Now, we've okay. got a lot to get to, so let's get started. When setting out to make our demo, we wow. wanted to push the boundaries of what's possible with UE5 today, while targeting next-gen hardware specifications. Holy shit! Here are sequences running in real time on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Wait, that's in PlayStation 5? Holy fuck! That's insane! Okay, welcome to the brand new UI in Unreal Engine 5. We've added several new systems that put you at the center of the experience. For example, the content browser can now be accessed like a drawer using hotkeys, allowing you to keep a clean workspace while still fuck? having access to all the content that you need. That's so crazy. We can crazy also collapse and restore editor tabs to and from the sidebar, maximizing the viewport Look at experience. That. And you're going to see a lot more it's of the UI as we get further into this presentation, but we can't wait for you to get your hands on it. Holy fuck, now, man. Now, one of the main features of Unreal Engine 5 is Nanite, our virtualized micropolygon geometry system that frees artists to create as much geometric detail as the eye can see. <gasps> Holy shit. Virtualized geometry supports orders of magnitude more All right, let me look at that detail again. as the eye can see. Wow. That is nuts, man. Dude, you guys got to remember, like, I, I, whenever I was growing up, you know what we had back whenever I was growing up? We had, we had Super Mario World. This dude, and this game was lit. And, it, dude, what the fuck, man? That is so badass. It's still lit? True. Virtualized geometry supports orders of magnitude more triangles without compromising speed. How many triangles? And replaces the traditional system of mesh LODs, handling all detail transitions seamlessly without any additional setup. Wow. In other words, Nanite lets the artist create while the engine does the work. Switching to this Nanite visualization, you can see individual triangles rendered out as different colors here in the viewport. These and triangles. because the geometry is now virtualized, you can feel free to place assets like these all throughout your scene to fill out a massive player space. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Like, look at this. It's so insane. Like, how is it even, how is this even real? Like, what really fucks with my head is like, you look at this and it's like, it could be real. And then someone just randomly puts something in the game. Like, that must be so cool to be able to do that. It's like you're shaping reality. You're basically God. Using this debug view, you can see individual it's not real, instances it's unreal. represented by different colors. It's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. Very funny, Each guys. Each instance in this environment contains around one to two million triangles, providing enough detail for the camera very, to roam with complete clever. creative freedom. Now, UE5's new anti-aliasing solution, Temporal Super Resolution, keeps up with all this new geometric detail to create sharper, more stable images than before, with quality approaching true native 4K at the cost of 1080p. While highly detailed assets are great on their oh, own, that's the lighting. high quality lighting that realistically reacts to your scene is what opens the door to Jesus more dynamic Christ. worlds and immersive gameplay. Lumen is our fully dynamic, real-time global illumination solution that immediately reacts to scene and light change, oh, making for more believable experiences. And the GI hooks in directly with our time. Bro, this makes me think the moon landing was fake. Dude, what if all that, all that shit that we've been getting from Mars is just an Unreal Engine 5? Because from now on, dude, every single time I see anything fucking, any like space thing, I'm like, man, dude, is this shit fake, dude? Cause it's getting so close to being real. Have you guys seen those like deep fakes of like Tom Cruise and shit where it's like somebody who's basically Tom Cruise and he's acting like Tom Cruise and shit. It's so fucking weird, man. Like we're it. I wonder what it's going to be like in 
like 10 years, just, just 10 years, how much different it's going to be. With day settings, allowing for true physically based setups for photorealistic environments. Oh my God. The Megascans library has meticulously calibrated physically based services and objects in the thousands of assets as of today. And the assets that we're highlighting here show just how powerful it is to have Nanite and Lumen working in tandem. What the fuck? Also, thanks to the new Sky Atmosphere system, it is incredibly simple to quickly simulate realistic time of day, carefully art direct volumetric clouds, and make modifications to things like atmospherics, sun position, and fog. And for this example, we wanted a fully oh, it's dynamic so scene. nuts, man. No light baking and realistic interpolation between the different that. times of day. Of course, when in development, having access to high-quality content that's easy to use helps you iterate He's quickly just putting a and rock saves in lots there, man. of time that can be better spent elsewhere on your project. With Quixel now being a part of the Epic Games family, we've made the full Megascans library free and open for all Unreal Engine users. Oh my god. Bridge, our online browser for Megascans assets, has historically functioned Dude, as this makes me want to, like, make a game or something, you know? Because I just think it's so badass, man. Like, this whole thing is just so fucking cool to me. I, I, I can't get over how interesting this is. And, like, how much they're capable of doing. Asmon World, World of Bald. Okay, yes, yeah, sure. Thanks, guys. We appreciate that. Standalone application for quickly exporting assets in bulk directly into the engine. Albeit Dude, separate from that's Unreal. That's so cool. Today, we're happy to announce that Bridge is now natively integrated directly into the engine UI. Now you can simply drag and drop assets directly into your scene for a more mm -hmm. intuitive and connected experience. And simply logging in with your Epic ID gives you immediate access to thousands of assets to use Look for free that. in your Unreal Engine projects. Wait. We are constantly looking to enhance- Yo, I just thought of this. Like, we're gonna watch the Dream World video soon, right? Why didn't they just make Dream World in Unreal? You know, like, why- why is it- that we ever even need to see this. It's, they did? Wait, they did? Why didn't, wait, what? <laughs> oh my God. Look at the difference. It's like between drawing with like a fucking precision pen and like a five-year-old fucking grabbing a crayon, like just fucking moving around, man. It's crazy. The value of the Megascans library. You like, and today like that we're sound? excited to announce that we're adding a brand new asset type called Mega Assemblies. That's good. Wait, what's, what's Mega that? Assemblies are the natural next step for us in removing even more barriers for artists in crafting their worlds. Just like larger assets. By combining existing assets from the yeah. Megascans library, our artists are pre-assembling elements that can be quickly accessed and leveraged to populate your scenes. Holy shit. Using the Moab set, let's add an assembly to our scene. And just like that, we were able to quickly change the composition. Bro, this guy can make a Grand Canyon in 15 minutes. Man, this guy's gonna be able to make a Grand Canyon. Wait, bro, give me a half hour, man. I gotta make the Grand Canyon. It's like, didn't it take God to make seven, didn't it take God seven days to make the earth? Six, six, oh yeah, he fell asleep on the seventh day. That's right. Um, six days to make the earth. So, at a certain point, if the assets are big enough, we could make the earth faster than God. Think about that. God used Unreal Engine. Dude, that's what it is. Yeah, that now we know. God, God used Unreal Engine 5. Exactly. ...of this area in our map. With UE5, we are reimagining what collaboration looks like for teams and projects of all sizes. I see that. A common challenge when collaborating on large worlds is deciding how to structure map content so that wow. everyone on the team can easily work without asset contention, while also avoiding painful merge conflicts. Jesus. A new system called World Partition makes traditional world building workflows obsolete by changing the way that we think about map files. Rather than requiring artists to build out map content as a series of streaming levels, so World Partition the allows teams to think of a single map as one large world that gets broken down automatically into many smaller, streamable cells on a grid. These cells can be selectively- Like, dude, I don't know anything about game development at all, but I bet that's so fucking useful. I bet that is, like, so ridiculously fucking useful, man. Like, every single time that I see something like this happen, I feel like Blizzard has less excuses to not fix the bugs. It allows for better optimization and better FPS. And that's so fuck. Yeah, exactly. Because the other stuff isn't even rendered at all. Oh my God.
loaded or unloaded in the editor to save on edit time resources, allowing artists to only load up the sections of the map that they need. On top of that, changes to actors in a world partition map are tracked at the actor level, not at the map level. This one file per actor approach empowers so different team members to work on different actors in the same map without having to worry about their changes getting clobbered in a merge or having to revert to get someone else's edits. So this is now, like the, this approach means like you could move a character around in this game, in this environment in real time, right? Like you could interact with this environment in real time. Yes. Holy fuck, man. Holy fuck. The demo's long and is 100 gigs, by the way, and the engine is 10 gigs. Imagine the game overall size. Yeah, it's going to be half as big as Call of Duty Warzone. Um, but no, I, like, here's the thing. Is people are getting to the point, the size of the demos and stuff like that won't matter. Because you're getting to the point, I think we will have petabyte drives in 10 years? Probably 10 years, maybe, maybe 15 years? Something like that. And I know we've got it now. I know there are some people that have it now. But um, it, it won't matter. Like, this shit won't matter. Like, there will be so much, like, 5 to 10. Oh, you guys, not SSDs, though? True. Yeah, you can run this at, a, a, you know, 5 FPS or something like that. I think it'll be 10. You'll be 50 by then? Shut up, fucking piece of shit. Stupid-ass bitch. And uh, consumer petabyte drives? Yeah, yeah, consumer, like, I'm sure that, like, the government has them. But, I mean, like, consumer, like, go to Best Buy and it's $250. You could have artists lighting, set dressing, and reworking the landscape could be simultaneously. All within the same virtual space. Bro. Wait, I'm Managing this much content at runtime typically requires a ton of thought about how to stream relevant content yeah. in and out to stay inside performance budgets. Exactly. Fortunately, World Partition handles that as well. At runtime, only the cells in a user-defined oh. radius from our player are so loaded. So they, they just and render as we move, in. New cells are streamed in, while cells no longer needed are replaced by their lower resolution, hierarchical level of detail, or HLOD version. And since all oh. projects have different requirements, the cell size and loading radius are fully configurable to match Holy each project's shit. content streaming needs. Another feature That's that so comes cool. along with World Partition is data layers. Data layers are a way to categorize map assets and collectively enable or disable them when you Dark want to world. alter the state this? of the world. Working in data layers, a separate group of artists was able to assemble a mythical reimagination of the environment with more interactive elements for our demo. At run. My, my opinion on this in general is that I feel like the character models and the human models are the one thing that is behind. Like the environmental design, I feel like is so close to photorealistic, it's insane. But like the, the human models are always like it, it's that bit behind. Like you're still like you're still going down that uncanny valley. And I don't know how long it's going to take for that to happen or to, to not to, to actually not happen for it to, to stop happening. Like maybe maybe it'll never happen because like it's such a core idea in like a person's brain. But I feel like they'll figure it out eventually. Time we can swap between these two modes, streaming thousands of actors in and out and enter into the dark world. OK, here we Let's go. Let's see this in action as we go back to chance. All right. So that's the spawn. Thanks, Galen. Many runtime and interactive frameworks in Unreal Engine are getting significant updates in UE5. One thing okay, we've added for okay. all right, all right. Imagine this. Imagine that fucking scene, and then you know what fucking text pops up? Dark Souls 4. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Animation is an experimental new full-body IK solver, which okay. is designed to give you better results with less work. Here, you can see it in action as the rig for our player character, Echo, corrects itself to adjust for variations on the ground below her. Oh, wow. It's deterministic, reliable, and around 10 times faster than before. To build and maintain more scalable gameplay systems, Jesus. we've also added a new framework called Game... So that's not like, you know, in, in WoW, where it's like you're, you're standing on the edge of, like, a thing, and it's like, it's like you right here, and you're like this? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. I'm living life on the edge. That's exactly what it is feature plugins that will allow you to build and ship game content in a more modular way. With oh game feature God. plugins, numerous core gameplay features can be built in parallel with better encapsulation and Are they using the same Chinese assets as the um, uh, the first video? I feel like they are. I feel like those are the reused assets. 
Yeah, I thought I thought content so. Content organization. Game feature plugins allow developers to add activation instructions to extend base game functionality, register new input actions for players, and interface with other frameworks such as animation. When we shifted into the dark world, we also activated a new game feature to give Echo a brand new attack ability. All of the assets and logic needed for the ability, including new animations, input controls, blueprint code, VFX, and audio, are contained inside this plugin. And core game classes have no idea that these oh, assets exist shit. until we activate it. We've also Dude, added- Dude, imagine a game like this with a world that's completely destructible. Did you guys ever play the game Red Faction 2? It was on like GameCube, PlayStation, uh, you know? And like in Red Faction, you could blow holes through walls and shit. And it was so fucking badass, man. And I've always wanted to have a game that you could really just kind of... It's like, just do that crazy shit. Just like, you know, okay, well, I don't want to go through this way. I'm just going to blow holes in the wall and, and, and fight this way instead. But this is so cool to see, especially like if all these other things are destructible too. A feature called wow. animation motion warping, which allows you to manipulate root motion animations to adapt them to the world. Echo's vault animation was authored to the specific dimensions of this rubble. Leveraging cool. motion warping, we were able to add notify states in the vault animation asset that can react to transform data passed in via blueprints. This allowed us to reuse the same animation to vault over other assets of different dimensions, Holy like these pieces shit. of debris, by sending information about their size into the motion warping system. Before triggering the vaulting animation, a blueprint script determines her rotation. I feel like the jump at the beginning is a little bit too jumpy. You know, it's like too fast. But I mean, fuck, I couldn't do a better job. I certainly couldn't do a better job than that. It's very floaty. It's like I, I like a good example. This is like Demon Souls. Uh, like the like character collision in Demon Souls and like like going over things in Demon Souls is so good. And I think that's like a, that that's where I would want to see it see it be at. But this is really really cool though. He's just showing tech. I, I know. Like I wonder how long it takes to do this. Like like how much of this is kind of like pre built. And how much of this is like things that you have to do? Probably like what a hundred, like uh, two, 20 minutes, bro. There's no way it takes 20 minutes to make that whole world. Like there's, I don't fuck that. Like I bet it took him over a hundred hours easily. Probably over a thousand hours. I don't know. I, I, I genuinely have no idea. How high up she jumps, how far she needs to move to get to the other side oh. and where her feet should land. Wow. Motion warping then adapts the root motion of the vault animation to match this data. Holy shit. Also, for the Rift Interact animation, we used motion warping to place Echo in the perfect position in order to ensure her hand would always touch the Rift. Jesus. So on the topic of animation, Unreal Engine 5 also includes our in-editor rigging tool, Control Rig. Shadow of the Colossus? New game? Meet the Ancient, a film quality creature imagined oh my built God. by our friends at the Aaron Sims Creative Company. Oh my God. We partnered with Aaron Sims and his group of talented new raid, artists boys. to concept the dark world and to bring it to life through an Look enormous mythical adversary. Now, every single animation for the Ancient was authored wholly in engine by the Aaron Sims creative team using Control Rig and Sequencer. All right, let me, let me go back and sure. look at it again, though. Because I wasn't really paying attention. So on the topic of I wanna animation, look, I wanna watch it one more time. Unreal Engine 5 also includes our in-editor rigging tool, Control Rig. Now that I'm, like, looking for, like, the different movements and shit, you know, I was just, like, kind of, like, this is cool, you know? It's like every part of them moves. Meet the Ancient, a film quality creature wow. imagined and built by our friends at the Aaron Sims Creative Company. Oh my god. We partnered with Aaron Sims and his group of talented artists to concept the dark world and to bring it to life through an enormous mythical adversary. Now, every single animation for the Ancient was authored wholly in engine by the Aaron Sims Creative Team using Control Rig and Sequencer, our linear cinematic animation tool. Also, just to push the boundaries a bit, they even there built it is. out of a collection of nanite meshes totaling over 50 million triangles attached directly to the skeleton. 
Control Rig was designed to keep artists close to their creations without having to bounce back and forth between software packages, allowing them to quickly iterate, all inside Unreal. Holy shit. While imagining the battle between Echo and the Ancient, we wanted to give the creature a heavy laser Ooh, that, attack that, that Echo would have to fight. avoid. We needed it to track Echo's location in the arena and fire a slow, sweeping blast towards her. That's cool. Taking advantage of the full body IK solver Holy mentioned earlier, shit. we were able to influence the direction and distance the Ancient reaches out during the firing animation based on where Echo is in the scene. Oh my Let's god. Let's see the results. Here is what the base firing animation looks like. Okay. And here it is again, with the full body IK post process layers enabled, and our info about Echo passed into Control Rig. With full body IK and Control Rig, designers and artists can now author fully dynamic animations that react to so gameplay without where having you're to build at. complex animation state machines composed of numerous animation assets. Holy shit, man. In Unreal Engine 5, we've completely overhauled the audio engine, centered around meta sounds, a new asset type used for every sound. The reason why it's different is it reacts to the player. Uh, it, it, so like the animation itself is relatively the same, but it, it's reacting to the player and it's reacting to like the environment. That's, that's what's different about it. Effect in our demo. Meta sounds bring the power and flexibility found in material editors to audio creation, Holy providing shit. fine control for authoring procedural game audio. With full audio synthesis capabilities and a rich audio function library, Metasounds give unprecedented Jesus. control over sound effects and runtime applications. Oh my God. This looks like the Matrix. Using Metasounds, we built the Ancient's laser the attack out of a combination of sound samples and synthesized audio. Two minute gameplay demo in 4K after? Okay, remind me after this. Let's briefly break down how oh, it's set up. I see, I see. Using the stereo mixer, Let's, what I, I think is really impressive about this program is how great of a job it does to visualize how the things fit together. Now, let's mix back in our sound samples to hear the final result again. Okay. That's cool. The sound doesn't really All matter right, to me a whole lot. Let's take down the ancient. Oh, it's an LFR. It's an LFR mode, guys. Yeah, this is the story mode of the game. Jesus. Damn. Now, everything we've been showing you in today's demo focuses on some of the new features in UE5, but many of your favorite UE4 features, such as Niagara particles and visual effects, chaos physics, blueprint visual scripting, and more, have also received numerous updates in Unreal Engine 5. Plus, all your UE4 projects can be upgraded to UE5, so you won't have to worry about forward compatibility for what you're working on. Dream World saved. Dream World saved, boys. Holy shit. Thank God for that. Working on now. Here at Epic, we are passionate about building great tools and new technology. And a big part of our excitement is being able to bring you, the developer community, on the journey with us. So today, Thank you. we're making an early access build of Unreal Engine 5 freely available on the Epic Games Launcher and the Unreal Engine GitHub so you can explore and test out these wow. tools yourself to get an early look at what's That's coming crazy. later in the full release of UE 5.0. Holy shit, dude. Also, we're releasing the project source for, for Valley us. of the Ancient, so you can check out how we use these features to build everything you've That's seen so in today's That's so fucking badass. We've got a series of deep dive conversations on these topics lined up for Inside Unreal our official weekly live stream, where you can hear from the engine dev team and ask your questions. Now, these are still the early days of UE5, and you can expect more news and features to be announced as we move closer to a production-ready release targeting early 2022. Man, dude, um, I'm gonna be so mad if the game that comes out made with this has a fucking, like, some bullshit store mounts or anything. I I'm gonna be so mad. Like, I I like this is a thing. Is I want to have these games be good, dude. They have to be fucking good. Wow. Thanks everyone for watching and welcome to Early Access. Holy shit. That's crazy because usually Early Access is like the opposite. So what was the video that you guys wanted me to watch the gameplay video? Oh, here we go. All right, let's watch this one here before we move on. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is a full gameplay. So this is the actual, like, full whole thing.
Look at that, dude. Put it in 4K? Okay. It is not 4K. Okay. Oh, 260p is 4K? I didn't know that. Okay. Oh, shit. It might be too, uh... Oh, there we go. Jesus. I don't know if this monitor supports 4K or not. I, I, I honestly don't remember. Wow. I cannot wait for games to come out that look like this. The stream doesn't? Oh, it, it's lagging? Okay, let me just take it back to 1080p then. Yeah, let's just take it back to 1080p, make it easier. Okay, here we go. Yeah, we're gonna go back to 1080p. Oh, they can destroy other shit too. See, it's like... Imagine a game that gets made, and it's like this, but it's bad. Like, imagine how, how sad that would be. If you make a game that looks this cool and it's a bad game. I would be so disappointed. It's like investing in Enron, you know? There's a giant fucking monster. I'll be honest, man. I've played this game. And that means a lot coming from me. Because you have to play as a female character. It's a classic wild WoW boss. Yeah, it's a classic wild. WoW. He has one mechanic. Yeah, yeah, it's it's classic wild WoW boss. And it's a classic wild WoW mage. One attack. One attack from each of them. Fucking got his ass, dude. That looks really badass, man. That looks really, really, really fucking badass. I'm gonna be honest. That is so cool. Uh, so hype. Remember the first time characters didn't have any fingers? Yeah, exactly, man. A and that's what's so nuts for me, is to, like, look at that game and then compare it to the games that I grew up playing. You know what I mean? Like, that's what the coolest thing for me is, personally. Super hyped as well. Yeah, I really, really want to see what kind of games people can make with this. I'm ready for Unreal Engine 5. Yeah, this is so cool. Like, if they had this whenever I was a kid, I probably would have gone into game development. Like, I I'm not even kidding you. Like, I, I, th I think this is so badass.